Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got three replays in the brand new RU251, which is the start of the Cold War Western Alliance German light tank slash TD line. If you do enjoy the video, as always, please don't forget to like and subscribe down below as it really does help out the ch channel. And without further ado, the RU251. It's similar in terms of how it plays to this the World War II version of the RU251, but you can go much faster. It, it's it's really, really quick. Because as, as you can see, with the stock set out, because this first game that you see in here is stock. This was like the second game I played in the tank, I think it was. Something like that. And we're running the advanced loader, the stabilizer, and the camo net. Because we're just making sure that the gun was better, the DPM was better, etc, etc. But without the speed equipment and fuel, etc, 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 you can actually get this tank to go at... 89 kilometers an hour Which is really really quick really quick. So this tank is absolutely rapid. It's great at flanking You've got pretty good DPM on the gun even stock the shell velocity is a little bit slow though on the RU251 because on the stock gun It is 940 meters a second on the APDS if you switch to the heat though You do get 1200 meters a second shell velocity, which is beautiful But the gun accuracy to in general isn't actually that bad You just got to make sure that you lead the shot and get the shots fully well aimed in because if you're not fully aimed in the shots do tend to fly well, just about everywhere, really, which is, you know, a little bit not great. But you do have a 1.84 second aim time with the build that I have, which means this gun does get aimed in exceptionally quickly if you let it. And that means you can really put the hurt into the enemy team. Also, you do have Hesh rounds, which are beautiful, which have 102 penetration for 320. And they are really, really good asset to have. If you, especially at the minute with the amount of RUs flying about, and it's probably going to be the case for a little while. If you load the Hesh, you're going to have a good time against all the light tanks. You'll, you'll be able to up your DPM a lot and you'll be able to get the shots in. It does have a pretty slow turret traverse though, so that's something to be careful of. Because, yeah, if you're not careful, you'll get out traversed on the turret and you realize that you're trying to swing the gun round to get the gun on target at something that's maybe on the other side of you and yeah it's a bit difficult but the 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 base speed of the tank is really nice at 89 kilometers an hour it means you are absolutely rapid you've got good view range you can get good spotting out you've got good camo as well i mean with the build that i've got now without the camo net I do have 243 meters of still concealment which is beautiful and realistically if you're to also drop the camo net Sorry, drop one of the whatever other stuff. You run the camo net, because that's what we're running in this game. You actually get your your still concealment down to 196. Because like I say, in this game, I'm actually running the advanced loader, the gun stabilizer, and the camo net. Because it's sort of the optimized scout setup is what I've got. So I've got the best camo I can get, the best gun handling I can get out of the gun, and then the best DPM I can possibly get as well with the advanced loader. And that's how I felt. I like wanted to set it up, but honestly, once you get... Once you get used to the speed equipment on it, oh my lord, it's so fast. But well, I'll talk about that in a second. So in terms of a crew on this tank, which doesn't change, I do run Born Leader, Rapid Reload, Sixth Sense, Steady Aim, Run and Gun, the Camouflage Expertise, Situational Awareness, Clutch Braking, and the Trap Mechanic. Trap Mechanic, because I just want to make sure that my tracks get back on, because a lot of the time if you take a shot in the side, you might get your tracks blown off, and there's a lot of tanks in this era that could permatrack you, and you don't want to get tracked in front of enemy tanks obviously because it, it would just mean death so the faster you can get your tracks back on the better the clutch braking to make sure that the track traverse is fantastic so i can make it turn on a sixpence and it means that i can be exceptionally mobile which is lovely and then the gun perks to make sure that the gun is as good as possible on the move because you're going to be taking a lot of shots on the move as well as being 10 percent more accurate situational awareness because you are a light tank so i want to make sure that this tank can spot for itself and a lot of the other perks are just ones that you're going to take in general in any era or tier whatever and then like i say in terms of equipment for this game that you're seeing we're running the advanced loader the gun stabilizer and the camo net there's lots of different ways to set up the tank to have fun it's down to you and how you want to kit it out this way makes it so that the gun is fabulous it makes sure that you've got the best dpm and it also makes it a lot harder for the enemy team to spot you which is definitely definitely nice so as you can see in this game so far we've managed 4.2k damage with 3k assistance we managed to use the position at D4 and just take advantage of the chaos, really. 
by watching the enemy team run around trying to chase our light tanks and we could just keep farming and farming and farming. We also managed to get 3k assistance because, because we got the situational awareness, we got the spotting capacity essentially, we were able to keep the enemy team lit up, spot the people that were on the, sat on the ridges around E123, and that, that meant that my team that were sitting you know, at A3, the people that were sat at, back at B7, could actually see them and then thus shoot them, which fed me some juicy assist assist, which is great for a light tank, right? Which is what you want. And you can see this tank is, is pretty quick. It's a little bit sluggish off the mark when you are stuck like you are in this game. If you, yeah, you, you do actually notice a big difference between getting the engine power or getting the engine unlocked and not having it. Actually, I think this game I did have the engine, thinking of just looking at how quick it is, because, yeah, if you if you have the stock engine, you'll notice it is a little bit sluggish. But, yeah, it it's a pretty damn nice tank to play this, are you? It's a good start to this line. I mean, it's not the entry era tank, it's actually mid era, technically, because you have to unlock it off of the M46A1. But, yeah, you'll have a good time in the RU. It's definitely a very, very enjoyable light tank. And that's said, there's multiple ways to set it up. So you can see, we've managed to catch this M103. We've got two shots into where we pop smoke to try and disorientate him. He ends up shooting the floor. We're just like, please let me get the shot before the 268. And thankfully, we managed to get the shot in before that guy gets up on top of the ridge. And the game finishes with the victory. Comes up with the team. Two kills, 5k damage, 3.7k assistance in the end because we spot that M103. First class, the Confederate. 1850 base XP, a pretty damn nice game there for the RU251, the start of the Western Alliance era one, well, start of the Western Alliance German Cold War slash TD line, because this, this line is a little bit odd, because it starts off as a light tank, then turns into two TDs, and then turns into light tanks again, it's a little bit odd, but yeah, it is what it is, and we're on the second game, the second game is speed build, we are speed, the only thing that we haven't done is add fuel if you have fuel traction system and the powertrain you will go at 108 kilometers an hour 108 it's very very fast very very quick i switched out the fuel again to have food because i wanted the ability to just have everything better with the food but you could definitely definitely run the fuel if you wanted to oh by the way oh yes 1,001. It's worth all the hit points we're going to lose. Goodbye, Mr. FV107. Good gravy, that poor guy. That was beautiful. We've basically lost all of our hit points right at the start of the game, but it was all worth it for that Mimi Ram. I had to had to do it, all right? I just had to do it. But we're going to start the game, essentially, with no hit points and 1,000 damage because we managed to get a beautiful Ram. And yeah, we have the advanced load of the traction system and the powertrain, which actually lets us go at 103 kilometers an hour, which is why I got rid of the fuel. Because sure, you could go at 108 kilometers an hour. That's great. But do we need that extra five kilometers an hour? I think 103 for me is perfectly fine. That extra speed is perfectly fine. So I'd rather take the food so that I can basically, you know, boost my reload, boost my accuracy, etc., etc., make everything because the food is such an is such a strong consumable to take. It makes everything so much better that it's just one of those that you really want to be taking if you can help it. And yeah, we want to run the food and I just dropped the fuel for it. But, you know, it's down to you. You could also take the smoke as well because by taking smoke, naturally you make your camo better that way. And if you need to smoke out, like in that situation where we ran the FE, it would have been quite nice to actually have smoke so that we could get away without them seeing us. But you know, it is what it is. So this second game, we are up to 1,700 damage so far on Azure Coast. We're going in to try and help with the FV4005, but we can't quite get there. The T100 L T T100 LT, the T100 tank destroyer, sorry, is being swarmed. So we're going to take advantage of the fact that he's been swarmed to get some free shots in. You can see the difference in the gun, by the way, between this replay and the last one. In the gun handling, without the gun stabilizer and with. Because the gun, you can just see how much it blooms out. It really doesn't bloom out that much at all in the with the gun stabilizer it really does if you don't take it so i was a bit torn if you want to see the grind for this tank and for the the jagdpanzer 45 and for the rakuten jagdpanzer 2 as well i did stream it and i'll leave a link down below for you to go check it out and you can see the full you know the full grind in total essentially and see how see which because we did try to meme we did run a full meme build as well a ram build to try and just see if we could get some juicy rams didn't quite work but you know we, we tried it that's the main thing 
And you can go watch that and see how we did with the grinding, essentially. Because there were some pretty nice games as well that you're probably not going to see, and we did okay with it. So yeah, I'll leave the link to that stream down below. But you'll see all the different builds. You'll be able to see the thought process behind when we changed little bits and bobs as well. And yeah, this this second replay was with that speed without the fuel. I mean, the third replay is with the advanced is with the same build as well, and it's just fully upgraded at that point. The, the, the last one is a fully upgraded replay. But we finished this first game, the first game, second game even. Brain wants to work, and we've finished second on the team. One kill, three k damage, one hundred nineteen assistance. I just wanted to show that because you saw the full speed, the Confederate, the third class with the twelve sixty four base XP. I just wanted to show you the speed, the fact that even in a matchup where you end up losing all your hit points, you can still do something, and yeah, that ram on the FE-107 was so meme worthy it had to be included because it was beautiful. And thankfully, we didn't get shut down doing it either, which is great. But we're on to the third and final replay of this video, and this time, again, we are... We've got the same build, so we've got advanced loader, traction system, powertrain. And we have that same crew. And this is the one, this is my, I think, the second to last game I played in it. And the last game I played with Stabs instead. It's a choice. There's, there's multiple choices that you can have while playing this RU251. Multiple different builds that you can have to play with it. And it's down to you and how you feel comfortable with the tank and how you want to set it up. Because I actually changed it. I think I'm going to stick with it. That I took the advanced loader off and put the gun stabilizer on instead because we get a 4.96 second reload with the advanced loader but if you take the advanced loader off and put the gun stabilizer on you get a 5.51 second reload so you gain 0.6 reload by having the advanced loader but i still feel like having that 5.51 second reload is really nice anyway so i feel like making my dpm way better well making my dpm better but then missing a fair few more shots because I don't have the gun stabilizer was a little bit of a trade. And I, I felt like, you know what, what's the point of having better DPM if I'm not hitting as much? So I may as well have slightly worse DPM, but have the gun stabilizer, which makes this gun absolutely fantastic. And means I'll hit far more shots on the move. So I think the best build for me personally was to have the gun stabilizer, the traction system and the, the powertrain. So you could go at 103 kilometers an hour, and then your gun was pretty good when you're on the move as well with the gun stabilizer, and just put up with the, the slightly worse DPM that you'd have by not having the advanced loader. I do think that's a good, a good decision to make, but it's completely down to you and how you want to set up the tank, pretty much. So this third replay, we are on Fred Vang, and on Fred Vang, we're just trying to help out our light tanks currently, who have gone in on the M41 Bulldog and the T54, and we managed to light tank power our way through the those little two little tanks. Next up is going after this RU. There is something shooting at us from the distance, though, so it's like, what is it? There it is. It's a T54. Oh, that shell ricochets, sadly, so we miss it. And yeah, this top gun, by the way, that we've got on this tank... The stock gun has 208 penetration on the APDS with 320 on the heat. The top gun, however, which is quite, which is definitely a lot nicer, has that better reload, better accuracy. But we have 230 penetration on our APDS with the same 320 heat and 102 hash pen, which is lovely. The, 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 the 230 pen on the light tank is definitely very nice for the RU. It means, means you can pen pretty much everything you're going to face in era one. And if you do struggle with it, you can just load the 320 heat instead and you can have fun with that. And you can basically wreck them. So now we're going to go in on the T-54 and the 268, which is kind of dangerous because the 268 could really hurt us. But I'm trying to focus out the turreted TD, the turreted tank first, sorry, not turreted TD. We're trying to focus out the T-54 first, get rid of this guy so that we can basically just then abuse the poor tank with no turret. So we're just going around in circles, keeping the shots flying in. Going after this T-54, waiting for the reload, we'll put the shot in and unfortunately we arrest our momentum. Just in front of the gun of the 268. That was a good plan, wasn't it? Ah, oh, silly, silly fool. So we end up taking the hit from the 268, which bleeds us of most of our hit points. We take a hit from something from the back as well. So we're just making sure that we're getting out of dodge as quickly as possible so we can't quite hit us and we get ourselves safe. We're up to 2.7k damage of 400. 47 assistance, the four kills, and we're just looking to see if we can see the tank that was shooting at us. And I think it was this RU. Try and get a shot in towards the RU, and unfortunately it misses. Like I said, sometimes this gun is a little bit troll and does like to miss. Unfortunately, we hit the dust there though as well. It 
it wasn't really going to hit that one, so it is what it is. We then noticed the 268 at the back. I don't know how I noticed that. I just sort of caught it. It's one of those things that caught the back of it. I could just see the silhouette. You can see it when we go out of the sniper mode there. You can just see the silhouette of the 268 on the background. I was like, oh, that's a tank. Let's have a look. And we managed to see it with the true vision and get the shots in. We've loaded heat with 320 because we were able to go straight through that 268. And we get a nice shot that goes into him just before he manages to pull back. We're up to 3.2k damage with 447 assistance. We're now trying to get some shots into the M48 pattern. Unfortunately, we ricochet off his side. Go for the upper plate shot there. We get it straight in. It's like, oh, hang on a minute. He knows. He knows. And thankfully, he doesn't actually shut us down there. I was thinking, oh, goodness me, he's looking. But I thought, oh, he's going to be distracted by the FE4005 look right next to him. But he was still looking at us. But thankfully, he never got the shot in to shut us down. And he dies to that 4005. Now they've got four tanks left. They've got two light tanks in the distance, a medium tank, and this 268. So we're, you know, we're pretty confident against something like a 268. Because a 268 has no turret. You can just, as long as you don't stop in front of its gun, you'll have a pretty good time. Because it's got no turret and you can abuse that. So we go in with the RBRT. Unfortunately, it bounces. But we get round his side. I could load Hesh here. Because 102 pen will go through that side profile. But it is what it is. We're just sticking with the main ammunition so far. And we managed to... Oh, we nearly got the kill there on that 268. We couldn't quite beat out the reload of the other RU. And the 268 gets shut down. Now there's only three tanks left. There's the medium tank on our right. There's the two light tanks at C5. Which I don't think we've noticed the medium tank on our right yet. There we go. There he is. It's an AMX-30. We are trying to get the shot on the move. But unfortunately it doesn't go in. We load the Hesh because 102 pen can go in against a AMX-30. The 4005 delivers a big bomb to him. Unfortunately, we hit the tracks for the first hash round, but the second one goes into the turret. Maybe we can get the kill. Oh, unfortunately, the shot flies behind the MX-30. We don't quite get the kill, and he gets shut down by the RU. Now we're going after the other RU, which is the last one alive, but he's been chased by my friend. So I'm looking at this going, can I get there? Well, he's just shut down the other guy. But unfortunately, this go to T50 ends up shutting him down. And we finished the game with a pretty nice total there for the RU-251. The start of this new German Cold War light tank slash TD line. Finished the game with four kills, four and a half K damage, 1,699 base XP. A pretty damn nice game for what is a very fun tank. It's a very good start to the, the line. Hell of a lot of fun. A lot of people will be memeing about in this tank. And to be honest, Era 1 is going to be a lot of RUs for quite a while because that's what happens when a new line gets released. But it's a da damn nice start to the line. You'll definitely enjoy it. It's great speed, great gun, pretty good DPM. It's got a lot going for it, the RU251. And it's just, it's a bundle of joy to play. So as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. A great success!